Welcome to the final lecture of Smart Materials and Intelligent System Design. In the last lecture, we have talked about energy harvesting system, in abbreviation what we call EH system. I have talked about the applications, I have talked about how to design a piezoelectric energy harvester, a simple linear model, concept of a basic energy harvesting system and then if uh, since you are using a piezoelectric material, if you remember that we had a cantilever beam which is made of piezo T in this case and then there was a tip mass that kind of a system we find out what is the response of piezoelectric material, what is the strain at any point, what is the output voltage and what is the power that you are going to get as this system is subjected to some variable dynamic load. So, this is what we have seen from the perspective of the application of such smart materials in terms of uh, you know harvesting the energy. There is another very interesting application of smart material that is coming up. So, that is that I want to conclude this particular course and also I will give a bit of a course summary at the end. So, this is what is uh, the thing that I want to discuss today, the concept of self healing using smart materials this is coming up in a very big way. Now, uh, the important point is that what is self healing, why is it needed, I will first discuss that. I will talk about self healing in plants, I will talk about strategies of self healing, material design, a new method of extrinsic self healing I will try to touch on, mechanical healing, SMA composites for damage identification and healing and SMA based healing in metal matrix composite and then we will come to the course summary. So, this whole thing started because of the failure of an aircraft, uh, you know, which was M18 Dromadaire aircraft in Australia in 2013 and the final report in the related to that failure showed that the uh, plane which is generally used for uh, actually giving water, uh, spraying water over fire. So, to control forest fires for example, or fires in agricultural fields etcetera and this whole thing you know the plane collapsed because there is a small fatigue crack that happened at the lower attachment of the fitting and that fatigue crack has actually originated from a small corrosion pit. So, a small corrosion pit which was not removed during the maintenance caused the complete failure of the plane. So, that means, if you could have had a sensing and a healing system, which could have easily taken care of this kind of small uh, you know changes in the system, you could have saved a big catastrophe. So, that was what brings us to the self healing. Now, self healing is a concept which is not unknown to the uh, you know living world. Say for example, you consider the bone, the structure of the bone which is given by the collagen fibers as Indian we are proud of it that it is actually given by the Ramchandran collagen plot. So, which actually gives us this angle between the carbon uh, nitrogen and the carbon carbon angle psi and phi. So, with what kind of psi phi region you are going to get the you know uh, these kind of uh, structures. So, that was defined beautifully by the Ramchandran plot because of which we know the collagen structure. Now, what happens is that once this bone actually gets a fracture, okay, there will be immediately a hematoma formation that will happen in the system and in that hematoma, there will be gradually this fibrocartilaginous callus formation that will happen and then this callus will become a bony callus and finally, there will be a bone remodeling that will take place in the system. So, initially there will be a fluid like system which will spread around the cracks and then there will be a development of fibers. Gradually the fibers that is the uh, you know the callus part, gradually the callus part will get mixed with the collagen fibers of the original bone until the bone remodeling takes place. That is the strategy of self healing that you know the living world 
uh, particularly the animal world takes. And how about the plants? Suppose if there is a leaf or a stem which gets uh, suddenly a cut because of some reason insect bite or some other mechanical you know failure due to wind etcetera. Now, what will happen is that all the surrounding cells here which were supposed to do say for example, for leaf uh, they are supposed to do this uh, photosynthesis instead of doing that they will be actually getting de differentiated. The de differentiation will actually make these cells coming back to something which is like pluripotent cells which are like stem cells in plants. So, that they can take then any form and then these uh, cells will be have the capacity to actually grow and develop all the cell layers that you know would be there that would be there in the original thing, because now they have to rebuild the entire system. So, instead of a special role of photosynthesis they will de differentiate to a pluripotent cell and carry out this formation. These for example, the hypocotyl you know uh, type of things. Now, uh, another type of strategy that plants use that is also you will see that people have kind of uh, got that in a bio inspired design, I will soon talk about it is when the sclerenchymas in a uh, kind of a plant during the growth actually gets crack in it. So, whenever these cracks happens uh, in the sclerenchyma due to growth of vascular tissues like xylem, then this swelling of some of the cells that happens in the system like parenchymas and then that will be. So, that will first swell towards this region as you see the swelling is happening followed by cell divisions. Okay. So, as if first of all from here something will come out and then it will it will extend and then there will be rapid cell divisions etcetera in the whole system. So, that you know it gets strengthened. Okay. So, that is this another strategy that they take. Now, taking care of this last one particularly there is a group of structure which is known as tensiarity structure. So, tensiarity structure is composed of actually cables as well as an inflated structure combination. Now, naturally cables take the tension and the inflated system takes care of the compression. So, with this kind of a system behaving together you can quickly build up bridges for defense applications etcetera as you can see that the car can is passing through a ready made bridge system. So, this is becoming very popular, but however as you can see the crucial thing here is to maintain the shape. So, that means maintain the inflated shape. Now, what if there is a small puncture in the system immediately the whole thing will collapse. So, you need in these systems a kind of a self filling mechanism inbuilt in it. So, what happens is that there is an active layer of a pressurized foam that is applied in such systems. So, if there is a leakage naturally this foam will start to come out and as soon as it gets in contact with the air what will happen is that it will start to get coagulations and it will block the path. So, the hole gets sealed and the structure works beautifully It's a fantastic example of passive smartness in this kind of a system a passive smart healing. There are people have thought of other ways of passive self self healing let us say the whites group in Urbana Champaign they have come up with actually two different uh, chemicals. So, what they do is that uh, this, this is a DCPD okay, based system that is dicyclopentadine okay, based system. So, uh, what they do is that they have a micro encapsulated healing agents as you can see that this is a micro encapsule capsules with the healing agent basically this DCPD and a catalytic chemical trigger along with that. So, there is a catalyst there as you can see the catalysts here. Okay. There are different types of catalysts for example, urea formaldehyde shell uh, you know is used in this particular case this DCPD with the help of a catalyst like a Grubbs catalyst you know they get actually cross linked. So, the idea is that whenever there is no cr uh, crack up to a major level then you know it will not touch the capsule, but the moment this crack is expanding as you can see that it is cracking this capsule cell. So, this urea formaldehyde shell is getting cracked and the material is coming out the DCPD that dicyclopentadine is coming out 
as soon as it is coming out it comes in touch with the catalysts like Graff's catalyst and a polymerization process quickly takes place. So, it gets polymerized okay, cross linked polymer network. So, what happens is that the crack gets sealed as a result. So, the crack cannot propagate beyond a certain point. So, that is a way in which you can have the passive crack control in such a system. Of course, one of the drawback is that you know once the material is used for many cracks you cannot reuse it this whole system is lost. So, it has a it has a life in it. Now, that means can we have a reversible situations? Well, people have done uh, some success like uh, Professor Arindam Banerjee's group in I, I, you know, cultivation of science, they have developed a peptide based intrinsic healing system and which is with the help of supramolecular polymers. Now, you know that in any polymeric system, the main bonding is carbon carbon bond, but for supra polymolecular polymers, uh, they have non covalent uh, interactions which is also quite strong in them and this non component interaction is also reversible in nature. So, as a result uh, you can see that with respect to you know strain level uh, in this material if I increase the strain level uh, the you know real modulus is coming coming down and as a result it will behave like a fluid like manner and the moment I can reduce the strain level it will become more solid. So, you can actually play with these, uh, they have worked on different peptide systems in which they have played with these and uh, you, they can actually control the uh, kind of uh, the phase of the system and make it more solid like or more gel like uh, while controlling a crack or while mitigating a crack. Because material has to spread through the crack at that time it must have a gel like behavior and then you control these uh, you know strain it will then behave like a more solid phase. So, you can control this and they have shown that with respect to time how the strength comes down and it regains the strength again. So, this is a beautiful you know situation that you can control with the help of supramolecular polymers. They have developed specific you know peptides towards this, but this is this we are looking for some engineering applications of these systems. There are other ways also of passive techniques like vascular cell filling. So, in this case it requires a special PTFE 3 D micro channel. So, you have to develop a special poly tetrafluoroethylene micro channels and through these micro channels you actually supply something which is known as MDI diphenyl methyl diisocyanate. Okay. So, that MDI can flow out whenever there is a rupture of this PTFE channel. Now, if there is a moisture that is present in the system, then the viscosity of MDI will increase in reaction with water. Okay. So, then you know you get a uh, you know damage initiates you get a polyurea formation. Once enough polyurea formation takes place moisture level comes down and again you get a MDI acetonitrile solution which will continue to flow through the PTFE channel. So, it is just very much similar like that bone type of a process that you know if there is a uh, you know fracture material fluid like MDI acetonitrile solution comes out and then there is a polyurea formation like that callus formation and once again enough callus has formed the moisture level in this case has come down and as a result you are once again starting the flow of M MDI acetonitrile. So, this is a, a strategy of vascular cell filling. Uh, people have also worked on a brick and mortar mechanism, where the mortar stiffness, okay, the mortar stiffness here, the mortar stiffness here can be actually controlled. So, this thin mortar layer uh, uh, through that you can control the movement of each one of these bricks actually. The brick is used as a glass strip and mortar used is actually uh, polyboroxiloxane. Okay. It is PDMS activated with boron nanoparticles and the complex microstructure performance uh, you know that you can see here uh, that is showing you that this is the performance of the uh, supra molecular system that I earlier told you. This is the performance of the PBS system and that is much better than the performance of the reversible adhesives that is generally used.
in a, a supra molecular system so far shows the highest strength due to the presence of high concentration of hydrogen bonds, but it is recovery or healing process uh, that from that point of view you would see that this material is much better in comparison to the other self healing materials. Uh, now, there are the some issues with this intrinsic self healing. Generally, the healing is initiated passively, so it cannot detect the damage at an early stage uh, until and unless the damage is really quite good and uh, then uh, you know it initiates the healing. So, that is a problem that you are not early detecting. Also, it is a typically open loop process that means you know you do not know where exactly to end properly. So, that is a question and there is no controllable mechanism to terminate the process. So, because of these issues uh, people have thought of extrinsic cell filling. So, in this extrinsic cell filling people actually regulate the healing rates uh, which involves the controlling factors that can affect the reaction kinematics of a healing process. So, for example, you can control the pressure as you can sense and then control uh, you can use sensors like fiber optics and control the delaminations. You can use photoresistors for controlling the cracks or acoustic emissions for controlling the cracks. Some of them are actually through vascular networks and some of them through intrinsic uh, network system. And the basic material that is used in some cases like GFRP for pressure, for fiber optics, CFRP, photoresistor, thermoplastics and acoustics emission the base material is of epoxy. The important thing here is that for extrinsic you have to supply these from outside from some pocket of source for intrinsic you have to use the internal material itself. We have thought of a new variation of the system where the material is very similar to the bone like system, but we actually redistribute the material inside itself. So, it, it becomes a controllable process. So, this method is based on electrochemical redistribution, which is triggered by voltage generation due to change in stress field. So, naturally you need some kind of a smart material. In this case, it is actually PVDF HFP, polyvinyl fluoride, cohexa fluoropropylene and a mixture of zinc oxide and copper nanoparticles. These are mixed together in a solid electrolyte form which we will call PVDF HFP. And then we have carbon fiber reinforcement and the PVDF HFP as the solid electrolyte they are combined to form a composite laminate and held together by this bolting system which also act as electrodes. So, you can see that this is the carbon fiber at the core you have this piezoelectric coating and you have this solid electrotype coating. So, these are the three you know layered system that you have. Now, with these carbon fiber and PVDF HFP, we can think of a new way of extrinsic cell filling. So, what will happen is that because of the high density of the fluorine groups that is present in PVDF HFP, it has a high coordinating ability with many metal ions. Okay. So, this will lead to a high level of ionic conductivity and fluorine also can further form H bonds which provide the system with some pseudo cross linking and that will also enhance the mechanical you know stiffness of the system. Here we explain a kind of a experimental system in which we have this basic you know system with the piezo film and a laser displacement sensor which is sensing the deformation in the aluminum beam okay, with a piezo film and uh, we have a electromagnetic system also uh, with this uh, whole system which is exciting uh, this uh, entire system. So, uh, with this you know we uh, what we find is that there are you can actually find out that how you can initiate the damage in the system and how this damage is getting healed by the extrinsic cell filling. Now, the way it happens is that wherever there is a concentration of stress, piezoelectric dielectric effect comes into picture, voltage gets generated. As the voltage gets generated, then there will be electrolysis that will happen because of a threshold voltage. 
and that electrolysis is the key thing in terms of the cell filling. Okay. So, you can uh, think of it as a control system in which you have the cell filling mechanism at the center which is controlled by adaptive control. So, whenever there is a damage there are two pairs of sensors, sensor 2 is used for data for prognosis that the nature of damage and it also says what is the estimated healing rate because of the propagation nature of the damage and sensor 1 actually measures the healing rate of the signal. Now, controlling the healing rate and control finding out the estimated healing rate and the actual healing rate you can control the cell filling mechanism in the system. So, this is a way in which you can control the healing in a system. This method would then need actually a control on the electrolysis in the system. So, here we are showing the electrolysis in the system and which is controlled with the help of a closed loop feedback control such that you know you can avoid the dead zones in the system. So, that electrolysis whenever the crack is very very low you do not need the electrolysis process. So, whenever the healing happened beyond a critical level you do not need the healing. So, you need the controller to change its control system by using an adaptive sliding mode you can actually change this control system. So, you can have a, con a sliding control law like this and with the help of that you can develop a control system and which you can implement for controlling of the electrolysis in the system. So, there are uh, and what happens during the electrolysis of the system? So, if you actually look back you can see that from certain areas this electro stripping is happening from that you know that mixing in which you have these uh, nanoparticles there and in some areas where the crack is present this deposition is happening. So, you are basically bringing strength back from areas uh, you know where there is no crack from that area you are bringing things and you are depositing it in areas where you have crack. And this entire process then is first sensed by the piezoelectric material like PVDA and later on this whole thing is initiated by the electrolysis process which controls the deposition of these nanoparticles. So, so that is what you know is this uh, controlled extrinsic system. Now, we will also talk about mechanical healing. In this case, you do not have any you know electrical system uh, in that. So, simply uh, if you have the SMA wire based system like SMA washer and the, uh, you know strings like that. So, what will happen is that if there is a stress, there is a stress induced transformation that will happen in the system. And through the stress induced transformation, you can actually uh, control the direction of the damage and that is the basic idea of mechanical healing. Now, this is used in composites say for example, in chopped fiber composites we have used such a system. You can use it both for sensing because during sensing there will be a change of resistance in the during damage there will be a change of resistance in the system as a stress induced transformation is happening the resistance change will occur in SMA. So, you can sense it and you can also say change the direction of the crack by changing the stress state around the system. So, that is what uh, you know is done in SMA composite and also uh, similar thing one can do in metal matrix composite system. So, in this case also uh, matrix is reinforced with a pre strained soft martensite SMA wires that will deform along with the matrix. And the plastic strains in martensite SMA reinforcement are accommodated by the reorientation of the twin structure and SMA induces a compression upon heating because then it will try to uh, get shortened uh, because of the transformation to the austenite phase. So, that will apply a compressive stress and as a result suppose if there is a crack here and SMA is applying a compressive force you are getting a mechanical healing it is kind of you know the crack is by the mechanical force you are actually snapping back the crack. So, that is the idea in the metal matrix composite system as you can see that you know there is a crack at the joint which is controlled in this manner. This is uh, I would just briefly give you a course summary whatever we have touched in this course we have talked about in, a, in, the, in the module 1 the introduction to the smart materials 
piezoelectric materials, one of the most popular one followed by magnetostrictive materials, smart polymers and shape memory alloys. What I have not touched in this are actually rheological fluids. They are also, but in this short course I could not touch them, rheological fluids. Okay. There are two of them, electro and magneto rheological fluid, electro and magneto rheological fluids. So, these two issues I have not touched, otherwise most of the popular materials I have touched in the module 1 in terms of introduction to smart materials. Then we have talked about composites, because without composites you cannot develop the smart materials. So, we have talked about what is a smart composite, we have given you a brief introduction to all the various types of composites, polymer, metal, ceramic, carbon carbon composites etcetera. We have talked about micro mechanics, strength, some uh, direction to classical laminated plate theory, which has been later on used in terms of actually developing these uh, constitutive relationship in the modeling of smart materials. That is the module 3, in which we have first talked about modeling of piezoelectric materials, in which I have first talked about fundamental equations of piezoelectricity, Euler Bernoulli model and uniform strain model. Then using that same concept, we have developed it for magnetostrictive materials. And also here we have talked about temperature effects etcetera and a special case of active and macrofiber composite. And also we have extended that concept for shape memory alloys. So, these are the three materials which we have constantly kept for our modeling purpose. Next in the final module, we have talked about intelligent systems, we have talked about energy harvesting and the concept of cell filling. So, I hope you have enjoyed the course along with the experiments that we have shown. These are the references that you can use for your further uh, you know study in this course. Thank you.